Hello everyone and welcome to my review of Linux Deepin version 15.3. Linux Deepin is a Chinese distro, it's based on Debian and they've provided their own desktop, the Deepin desktop environment. Now just to be completely different this time around, I actually want to show you a little bit of the installer. I have to say this does look completely different to anything I've ever seen before in a Linux installation. I know that's a bit odd though, it thinks I'm in the English US but has recognised I'm in the time zone of London, UK. So no, we are England, there we go, English UK, English UK, extended, yeah, wind keys, that's close enough. Can't highlight. Oh, okay, it's all fun and well having something fancy, but if it doesn't behave like a normal text box. Next. Yes, installed it on that 48 gig sized hard drive. Deepin will be installed to free space, yes. Because as you can see, it's a very unique distro in the way it is styled. The layout of the desktop is very simple. You have this launcher, which I currently have on the left-hand side of the screen, but originally was on the bottom of the screen. Now it should contain the shutdown button, time and config menu. But for some reason, most of that has just disappeared upon the reboot of the system. So I'm just gonna try and reboot the system again to see if it comes back again. But it gives you a look at the shutdown menu, which even here is looking quite nice as well. Ah oh, good, so now we can see I have all the icons back. So yes, we have the time here, network connection, volume control, shutdown, and there's the control center. And above that we have shortcuts to the applications. We have a multitasking view so you can spread applications around between different desktops or virtual desktops. We have a show desktop button and the application launcher. The application launcher is very similar to the KDE dashboard. Although you have the option here to switch between an unsorted view and a sorted view. So it is currently sorted by folders here, so you can just click between them. Yeah, that's quite nice. That's a bit of a different touch than I've normally seen. Back to the unsorted view, and you can find applications just by starting to type for them. So let's try system monitor. Yes, and that is very fast and responsive. Calc. Yes, you found me a calculator. There is a slight bit of lag opening the applications and navigating around. I believe this is a virtual box issue, not a system issue. I've had to increase the resources that I've allocated to Deepin, so this is double what I would normally give a Linux distro for a virtual box review. So it has a quad core and eight gig of RAM. So you can see with nothing much open, we're using just over 400 meg of RAM. Right clicking on the desktop brings up the option to change wallpaper and also sets the navigation options for the corner of the screen. Let's have a look at the wallpapers. Oh look, there's quite a few different ones there. And we have the menu at the bottom of the screen. That is very much different than I've normally seen for a Linux desktop. Ah look, only desktop, only lock screen. Different. So opening up the file manager, does show a bit of the um, Chinglish roots of this system. Yes, the Chinese English, the imperfect language here, but we have a slight idea of what they're saying, but it's not quite correct. Property, for instance, instead of properties. Throw to trash. Okay, can I pick it up and lob it then? Open with others. Okay, what's others then? All right, that's the list of the applications. Not necessarily suitable applications, but the list of applications. So that is correct, it is functional here. What if I open it? What's it going to open it in? And right clicking on an icon here, which isn't firmly set in the dock, it does give you the option to dock it. So yes, close all. Ta-ta. What is about on it? Deep in file manager, it looks very reminiscent to Nautilus. Let's look at some more unique features of this operating system that are deep in the store. <clears throat> Web torrent, really? Is that in a software center? <laughs> okay, let's look at something else, not something that's uh, potentially illegal. Deep in cloud scan. New scanning technology. It will connect your scanner to the network and is enabled for network scanning daily use. What? 
Run your scanner over the network. Okay. Uh, that's something I've never, ever thought of doing. The layout of the store is really nice. Look, we have some information about the application. We've got application ratings and reviews. Oh, a number of downloads. We've also got some pictures of the application. And there we are, we get an idea of the comments. So it requires signing in, and signing up for making comments on the store. Even the layout of their internet site here is very reminiscent of the desktop. The music player, deep in music. Come on, hurry up. Ah, get there in the end. As I said, that lag could be more to do with VirtualBox than the system itself. Although I wouldn't have expected it to take this long to open a simple music player. Can we just close this? Can we start? Can we just do something that... Ah, yes, okay. Ooh, different. We have some imagery here. Now what I haven't done is loaded any songs off my network. That was a slight mistake. Opening up the music player without anything to play. Ah, okay, minimize to tray. Good enough option for me. Deep in the movie. Now I did test this one out. Yeah, it looks fine. Very simple interface. Now I did try this out with a music video. Patent encumbered codec. Like I think it was MP4. And it played straight away. Looks like they've loaded in the restricted extra codecs. So the browser of choice is Google Chrome. If you right click on the icon, we have the option to open an incognito session. Now, why does it keep coming up with this unlock keyring? Look, I don't have a password set. I've never set one. If you're referring to the pseudo password, or well, should we try it out? Ah, okay, it just wanted the pseudo password. Now the control center. This looks more like a phone-style interface. Okay, we've got the overview of the options here. Uh, something you don't normally see in a control center in any desktop in Linux. The boot menu, the grub boot screen. So you can turn the theme on and off. You can set the boot delay. The text color. So good points to ingenuity here. That is, as I said, something I've never seen before. The personalization here, now it gives you a couple of options between a light and a dark theme. When I tried out the dark theme, it didn't really make a whole lot of difference. But did you? It was only the pop-up boxes and a few of the buttons that seemed to be different. It didn't look anything like that, and, and I actually shut down the reboot of the system, so I could accept it not taking immediately for a live running system, but honestly, for a shutdown and reboot, I would have thought it would have done. And I don't believe that's just a virtual box issue. Okay, so we've got a few different cursors here. Nice. And we've got the font selector. So what else do we have here? So we've got, well, that's volume control. This is the network connection. Just brings up that menu again. Time, date, and calendar. Yes, that's a nice, simple calendar. And the trash, which we throw things at. Trash zero file. So you notice with the programs that are open do have a very fine line just down the left-hand side. The left-hand side in this instance, because the dock is on the left-hand side, yeah. It's just about visible enough to see which programs are currently open. So looking at the applications that we have, so we have WPS Office. Okay, we have system checks, some formulas are missing. Yes, I know, and I don't really understand what your solution is. Yeah, cheers. So we have Skype, Thunderbird for the email client, a remote assistance tool. Bootmaker, our Spotify, and Crossover. I think it had Steam in the list somewhere as well. Why can't I see it? Steam, yes. So we have Steam as well. So that was a look at a Linux deep in. Well, it certainly does seem to be quite a glamorous looking desktop. Shame about somebody a chinglish here and there, but yeah. other than that, it is glamorous. I can't judge the performance too much here because it is VirtualBox and lagging quite badly. Certainly quite an interesting Linux distro, and it does have that more unique feel about it. Thanks for watching. I shall see you all later.